Yeah, my dog. How is it? What did you order? Bacon. What? Like a bacon sandwich, baguette, French. Oh, but yeah. I'm seeing this. Oh, this, cappuccino. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cozy. I ordered a cayenne shot. This is, looks a bit more than this double, actually. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just the chili shot, or like... Yeah, I don't know what else is inside. I just asked for some citrus and some cayenne, bro. I mean, you're driving, though. Because, like, there was a vodka, like, chicken vodka pasta thing. There's a what? Chicken vodka pasta on the menu. I saw it. Chicken? Vodka. And pasta? Yeah. <laughs> so where does the vodka go? I'm more of a tequila guy myself, but like, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're just waiting for the car to be washed at the wash behind us. And we're here having whatever we just told you. And we're here entering you to the S2000 review. But before we get into the review, I wanted to get you to speak to the owner, like for you to understand a little bit more about the car's history. Because there's things I'm gonna talk about that is not gonna show up, or there's things I'm just not gonna remember. So he will tell you all these things. He's a yapper as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, please subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Ding. <laughs> and yeah, bro, just chat about your car, whatever you. Yeah, I remember you did mention that. The first owner. So how many owners have they been? So I'm the fourth owner from you. Fourth owner? Yeah. The fourth man in line. Yeah, it's a 2007 Honda S2000 yeah. AP2. With the AP1 engine. With the AP1 uh -huh. engine. Yeah. Because you didn't get the AP1 engine in South Africa. Ooh! <laughs> this is some good stuff. It's like, it's like lemon, honey, and cayenne pepper, and... No it, vodka? No, 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 none of that. So I don't need it. <laughs> no. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. First owner was in Durban. Old white guy, kept in his garage for about half his life now. Yeah. Second owner, Indian dude in Joburg. He did all the aftermarket stuff, suspension, uh, exhaust, As you guys generally do this. Yeah, yeah. He autocrossed it. Uh, and then he'll call it Durban it. stock. Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. As Indians tend to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is good. A uh, guy out in Cape Town, drove around the weekends. Yeah. He put a sub in the, in the car. It was actually killing the battery, I had to disconnect it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you can battery. run it to uh, run on the ignition. But I guess it's the way he, wi he wired it. Yeah, the, it's yeah. kind of ugly, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the boot okay. looks ugly now. Mm. They kind of hate it. I bought it from him last year, in November. I've just been enjoying it. Like, I daily drive it, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, who raced it? Second driver. Second right. runner, yeah. So his mod is still on the car. Everything except the suspension, I'm probably gonna keep. The suspension is a bit too low. Yeah. Like it looks great. It looks fantastic. But it's. Uh, I don't believe in anything being too low, my brother. I mean, when you're scraping as much as I scrape, you just need to drive differently. You just gotta. <laughs> say uh, the bro, S. Roads. Say the S, my boy. Eh? I love the fact that you kept, they kept the original rims. Yeah, yeah. It look really good in the car. All of us, all four of us that have owned the car have done as little to it aesthetically as possible. So at some point it got a Civic Type R badge. Oh, no. Like the, the red Honda badge. It's not great, but yeah. like, I think it works. I have the original still in the car somewhere. True. So like, I can switch it out if I wanted to. I've been playing around with the idea of like a spoiler because I've seen it with a spoiler yeah. and it just looks, but looks I, clean. I, I don't agree with the spoiler on a coupe. I, I don't know. It just doesn't... Yeah, I mean... No, no, I'm on a drop top. It yeah, just, yeah. It doesn't... Does it really... I hear you, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I get that. It's, it's giving Need for Speed, what's it, Fast and the Furious? <laughs> it, it was mean, it Too Fast, Too Furious? Or? It was actually in both, but yeah. So it was in Fast and Furious, yeah. the first one. Johnny Tran had a black one, just like mine. Yeah. Second one, Suki, had a pink one. And both of those had spoilers. The last edition of the S2000 was like mm. a special edition. You see, ah, Club Racer. That's true. That came with a spoiler from factory and a hardtop. Is that the one that they did the spoon kit on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Nice. I mean, you can get this. Uh, technically, you can get the spoon kit for all of them. Okay. But like, when that kit came out, they made like a spoon kit just for that. Sure. Aftermarket hood. Okay. That would be cool. Yeah, aftermarket hood with the one. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. The slatted yeah. exactly that. on the one side. You actually sent me one of those. Yes. Yeah, a white one. Uh, in the flesh, I haven't actually seen it, so I don't know how that looks. Yeah. I've 
there's very few extra thousand on the road today, so. So keeping it as original as possible might be the best choice. True. It's, again, it's your car. And I really like what the other owners have done with the suspension, engine. Only thing that I would change like internally is probably a supercharger. Okay. You yeah, would supercharge uh, a highly strung four cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends because you've seen the engine bay, right? With the colder intake, there's yeah. so much space in there. Well, like yeah. it, you could you could fit something huge. Not exactly like a powerful car. Yeah. And for a man like you, who's like used to the supercars and the sports cars, yeah. I mean, it's a sports car, but it's like it's a corner. It's a canyon carver. It's not a okay. drag car, right? right? Yeah. So it's more. You can use all of the power all the time kind of car. Very much so. Which is more enjoyable than using 20% of 800 horsepower. Rather drive a slow car fast, yeah? Rather drive a slow car fast. All right, guys, we're going to get into the review now. So thank you for getting this far. Please subscribe, comment, and share. What's up and welcome beautiful people who just tuned into another Rush review and just like me I have something special for you. This car was born in the same millennium I was born in 2000 and this is when a badge meant something. This is the S2000 and it has 2000 cc's of cc's. And here we have one of the variants of the S2000 that came in two is the AP1 and AP2. Here we have the AP2 body with the AP1 characteristics. What are those? AP1 revs all the way to 9000 revs and the AP2 revs to 8,000 but now the shorter rev limit gives the AP2 a better mid-range torque around the track. The AP1 is better to brag to your Porsche friends about. I'm with a bigger big look. Well that's gonna be fine. Nice. It's 2007 and Honda hadn't really figured out proximity key yet so start procedure. You don't have to put your foot on the clutch either. So put the key in the ignition and then check again. And then you turn the key, you check again. And then... So this is an engine start button. It does not say start, stop. It is an engine start. So if you push the engine start while it's on, it's, you're gonna hear some really weird noises. Just turn the key off. Push in and bring the key out. We're sat here in the cabin of the S2000. It is more function of a form, but regardless, it is a great place to be. Everything is solid, everything's solid to the touch. There's leather all around, all around this entire cabin. And then we get to the storage compartments over here. You have one storage compartment right here, which leads you to the boot button. And then you get another storage compartment at the top here, which leads you to whatever else you want to store there. In terms of storage, the car does have bins on the side that allows you to put your phone, like little nets, inty binty nets to put your phone or whatever wallets there. But other than that, creature comforts aren't too many. There are cup holders in the center. That's the one time the passenger is considered in this car. There's also quite a large bump in the passenger footwell. So this is a very track focused, driver focused car. Track focused, not too sure, but let's just say driver focused rather. So the air vents, let's start with the aircon, right? Aircon, there's two vents for yourself. The passenger is an afterthought, and you'll see why a bit later. Two vents for yourself and the air vents are controlled here. The AC unit is over here with the driver facing the driver, as well as the radio. Yes, the passenger can touch the radio, but the driver also has his own radio controls on the right here. Mode push, audio control, channel mute, volume up and down on the right. So passenger can, but driver is in command, is in control. A few things, being a tall person, it is about a bit cramped with the roof on and the seat adjustment does not go up and down, unfortunately. Uh, I can only go back and forth, I can adjust this part. Um, the steering wheel as well goes up and down, but does not come towards me or away. So it's a pretty fixed position. I would love to sit a bit low in the seats like you do in your BMWs, but then again, it's an S2000. Let's take you to the boot and see what that's about. So here we've got a Rockford Forsgate uh, four channel amp. Or is that a two channel monoblock? Who knows? But uh, we've got some sort of amp happening here. Uh, the owner just took out the sub because he didn't like how it looked. And then you get the spare wheel compartment over there. Quite cute, quite demure. We're gonna talk about maneuverability and this clutch. This clutch, the biting point is right at the floor. 
So be careful. That's all you gotta do is be careful. The clutch is heavy. Oh my goodness, this is a heavy clutch. And it does not have any assists whatsoever. So you stall like a man and you have to get back, start it back up like a man. Oh, if you're a lady driving this, you're not going to enjoy this as a grocery getter. I'm not saying that ladies only get groceries. I'm just saying that you wouldn't enjoy this for your daily commutes to the shop and back. Um, the owner does daily this car, so he enjoys it for all of its daily purposes because he enjoys the nice rumble of that exhaust. Let's get into the engine bay. Now, the engine bay has a few interesting stuff. There are some dress-up bolts and some pipes that lead to different places. Let's get into it. Engine bay is quite interesting with a lot of different colors, but let me talk about driving dynamics. 50-50 weight distribution front and back, and we have the engine sitting behind the front axle. That makes it a mid-engined front engine car, just like a Ferrari. Right, so before we get into the engine, the big part of the story over here, we're going to get into the dress-up bolts. You see, the dress-up bolts and the carbon fiber on the front is like salad dressing on your salad. You can have a salad without it, but you put the dress-up bolts around it and it adds a little bit of flavor. So after the salad dressing, we have the intake leading from the intake manifold all the way down to the front of the car. So this is a cold intake. So the intake has to be as far away from the engine where the heat is as possible. And that's what they've done here. Moving on to the rigidity strut bar on the towers of the suspension, which are on Tain Springs and Coney Shocks. Moving behind that, we have the engine. Now the engine is, as you know, two liter. That is strung all the way to 9,000 revs. Owner says that he refuels once a month. He takes his thing to school almost maybe three times a week. So <laughs> I, think, I think that's ridiculous. You're getting civic economy out of something that looks like an S2000 and drives like an S2000. So the Honda boys that generally replace the exhaust with trumpets always talk about this thing called VTEC. And this is a dual overhead cam. So it has two cam profiles, one for daily driving below 5.2 grand, and then for racing above 5.2 grand. Let's be honest, you're only driving normally and changing shifting gears between two and three grand. So this has a fuel economy part of it and a racing part of it. We are now joining the road and getting into the short, oh, it's the short shift. Oh, this thing shifts nice and short, bro. This is cool. This is so nice. <laughs> oh. No ways. No ways. You drive this every day. <laughs> you drive this every day. Listen to this exhaust. Trust me, this is living. The, no, listen. Oh. Okay, firstly, the clutch is like right there. Like you lift off and the clutch, okay, cool. And then the short shift makes this a dream. Heel towing is a bit tricky because it, it, there's more metal on the pedal so it kind of slides off. Um, I'm just being a bit careful with the um, clutch as well because it's, it's quite an interesting experience as well. It's very direct. Did you remove the clutch delay, delay valve? Nope. You didn't? Okay, cool. But even without removing the clutch delay valve, it is solid, it is brilliant. Uh, I just think the heel toe will just get a bit of getting used to, but it's, it's nice. You can feel that it's not as smooth, but for, that's just me because I don't really know this car that well. But I think this is an amazing car to drive. The drop top, I would never pick the top up in this car. Yeah. I would never pick the top up in this car. No yeah. ways. No ways. Uh, let's go, man. Let's, 
Let's enjoy this. Oh, bro, the bubbles and pops on the overrun? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy the speed. We're not going at like ridiculous speeds, but we're having this much fun. Bro, you're definitely not going fast at all, but you're enjoying every every minute, every second. This is an enjoyable drive. This is a driver's car. This is what it's about. Oh. Oh man, this transmission! <laughs> Listen to that. And just above five, you start to hear a different note. You start to hear the V Tech kick in. The V Tech kick in. And all the trumpets of the band are singing the same song. We're gonna stop and go because there's a roadblock ahead, right? And what's interesting is that it's more difficult to drive this car slow than it is to drive it fast. Much <laughs> that is quite a dramatic exhaust and you hear a lot of small things about the exhaust you see when you're just rolling cruising at maybe you know three grand you're just rolling in fourth gear third gear you just tap the throttle it's like valves have opened up it's like the heaven gates have just said, ah, and it sings to you. It really does. You just tap, you say, oh, you're available? The horses under that engine are available? Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. I'm not going to use it in fourth gear, but thank you for letting me know, okay? So I think driving this is one. It's like driving a 944. I've driven two 944s, C2 cab, and a drop top as well. So I've experienced both of them. And let me tell you the drum, the drama from this. Unreal, unmatched, unreal. You see, you're in fourth gear, right? I'm in fourth. And then... It's letting me... It's available. The power is there. There is no shortage of power here. Listen here. This is not ESCOM. There is no shortage of power here. Oh. My guy, you have one hell of a car, my brother. You have one hell of a car. Wow, this is... <laughs> you have a car. You have a machine, you have an automobile. And here, the traction control says VSA. Vehicle Stability Assist. Yeah. There you go. Why do I only hit traction at like six grand? <laughs> this is the wheels at six grand. There's another like opening of the pipes at like six. You know, there's our first opening, the first gate to say, are you ready? The second gate says, take the reins. Take the reins, ride the pony all the way. So <laughs> listen, this is exciting. This is exciting, you stop and go traffic, but I'm excited. And I think that this is what makes a car more enjoyable. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. We are entering a stretch of road and I want you to listen to her. Yes.
Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. This is an automobile. to Honda. Honda? Well done. Honda? Well done. Congratulations. Congratulations. You made a success. This has been the car section, the driving section of the review. I'm sorry for the instability of the camera. We will upgrade equipment, but listen, I am enthralled in 9,000 revs, okay? Do you hear that? Those pops between shifts, no! That is the end of a lovely review of the S2K, S2000, S2, you stole my heart. You stole my heart. This is a driver focused car. The passenger will enjoy everything the driver is doing from this seat. This is automotive ingenuity. This is the peak of whatever it peaks because I am so filled with euphoria after driving this. It is really a special car to drive. It is a gem. These were going for 320 to 300K new. And the price has slowly crept up to now they're going for 450, 420 used. Owner over here picked his up for an undisclosed amount and he plans to enjoy it for as long as he breathes. I would too because this is something new. Something new to me, something old to the world. But regardless, thank you very much for coming to another Rush Review. We have another one, stay tuned. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. We love you, we love cars. Let's do it for the culture. Let's bring more cars on. Let's do more, thank you.